357 Magnum versus 10 millimeter versus 44 Magnum, 180 grain XTP bullets. So these are all the same bullet weights, all XTP bullets, and all different diameters. And also, the reason why I picked these particular ones is because they are all really, really similar in energy. Uh, so before I get started with this test, this custom here, Hornady Custom was provided by my Patreon, Dan. So thank you so much for that. And another thing I want to mention is this is a very, very low powered 44 Magnum compared to typical. So don't take this as a end all and this is what calibers, this is what you're getting with these calibers. It's just what I happen to have for a very specific reason. And the reason why is because I wanted to have them all really, really similar energy. We're all right around 700 foot pounds energy, but the difference is gonna be sectional density. You know, a lot of people wanna see this test like this. They're like, use the same bullet weight, use the same bullet weight. They love it because it's easy to follow, you know, your velocities, you know, you're gonna have the same energy per velocity number. So it's really kind of easy to follow. However, we look at the 357 mag, it's like near halfway in the case because we have all that weight pushed on a smaller diameter way down in that case. We go up to the 10 millimeter, a little bit less sectional density. And then we go all the way to the 44 mag, you know, it's barely in that case. Not a lot of bullet weight behind that. So that'd be kind of an interesting test, by the way. You know, this is a Glock 41 conversion. We got two four inch barrel revolvers. They have about the same amount of bullet travel in those barrels from the bullet nose to the muzzle. So it should be a really fair, interesting test. So we're gonna go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. And then I'm gonna do clear ballistics because I really wanna get a good idea of very subtle differences in these. Um, so we have three inches and then we're followed by one quarter inch medium density fiber board to represent our ribs or, or sternum and then to clear ballistics. So we have, uh, you know, about 35 inches of this stuff plus this, and this typically equates to two inches of this. So if you were gonna get, let's say you had 12 inches of penetration it's showing in this, it would actually equate to 14 because of this. Then after that, I am gonna shoot from 25 yards today. And I'm just gonna see, you know, how they move that uh, steel silhouette out there, full size ISPC target. So let's get started with this test. All right, I'm about five yards from the target, four yards from the chronograph. I want to reiterate this again. This is not a Glock 20. This is a Glock 41 and 45 ACP. I have a conversion barrel, conversion extractor, a conversion spring, conversion, or, you know, a 10 millimeter magazine. I get a lot of comments even after I explain this. Man, your Glock 20 jams a lot. When I explain it over and over again, this is a conversion. It's got a terrible feed ramp on it. It's like narrow. It jams a lot. But I'm just going to do three rounds because I don't have a lot of the other ammo. And we'll see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get here from five yards. No read, no feed. <laughs> Twelve eighty six. Twelve sixty four. Twelve ninety eight. So pretty good velocity. I got a lot of weird stuff going on here. Yeah, that magazine is messed up. Let me try the three fifty seven mag. See how that compares. And the reason why I keep using that pistol is because it still gives good velocity. So it still works for a ballistic test gun either way. So. Next up, we have our 357 mag. We'll see how close we get to that velocity where we're getting with the 10 millimeter. It's easy to follow because it's the same bullet weight. So 357 mag. 1370. 1347. 1353. A little bit more powerful. Um, let's try the 44. And I believe the 44 is going to be a little bit closer to that 10 millimeters power. So let's see what we get with the 44 mag. This happens to be my house gun load because I specifically picked a low powered 44 mag rather than a 44 special or a full house 44 mag. So let's see how this does. 1283. 1285. 
1308 so we're really really close to the 10 millimeter and one thing i will say is even though the bullet weight is the same as that 357 mag and this gun is only two ounces lighter than that revolver for 357 mag the recoil is actually significantly more in this scientifically i don't really have an explanation for that but that's what it is uh, so let's set our ballistic gel block and see how these all compare to each other so keeping in order i'm going to start with the 10 millimeter uh, we're going to go through four layers of denim and two three inches of ballistics gel and then a quarter inch medium density fiber four more gel so let's see what we get 10 millimeter all right So we can definitely see where we hit this. It's a lot larger than starting diameter. So that's expanding right away. So it looks like our damage path here is at about 16, 16 and a quarter, something like that. And we add this in, you know, that's about 18 inches. So not too bad overall. That's not really over penetration. Now we're gonna move on to the 357 mag and that might get kind of interesting. All right, 357 mag theoretically have a lot more sectional density. This should penetrate more. You know, it is more powerful though, so if it gets larger expansion than typical, then it might not. So, still don't know until we do it. So, 357 mag, let's see what we get. <laughs> a lot of blast. So we bounced all the way down here. This is weird. Definitely hit the table. Um, but, you know, it just bounced right back up. I'm not even going to reshoot that because I'm just going to take it at face value for what it is. Because, you know, even if I shot it again, inch off, either way, it might not make much difference. So our damage path is at 22 and a quarter. So that's actually 24 and a quarter. So just like we were thinking um it had a lot more penetration and if it were just based on that extra 50 feet per second or whatever over this this would not happen it is based on that sectional density pushing more energy into a smaller area which pushes it very deep let's try the 44 see how that compares all right 44 mag let's see what this does That hits that a lot harder, even though it's not more powerful. So it looks like I clipped the edge, but I got most of that through there. And a lot larger than starting diameter. And it jolted this block a lot worse. But what we're looking at here is our damage path is at about 15 and a half. So that'd be about 17 and a half without this. And it is very comparable to that 10 millimeter. So... I'm not wrong in using that for my home defense gun because I think, you know, or at least one of my home defense guns with that load because we're not getting over penetration. That doesn't look too bad at all. So let's just shoot from 25 yards, see how these all compare to each other. All right, 25 yards, 10 millimeter. It's going to jam, <laughs> but doesn't mean this barrel isn't accurate. So let's see what we get. Weird types of jams going on here. All right, I'm not gonna shoot anymore. That's painful to watch a <laughs> pistol do that. Uh, let's move on to something else. 44 bag, we'll see how this does. Okay, 
Cases are a little sticky here. This stuff has a lot of blast. I pulled that one. Go for a headshot. <laughs> Thought I had one more. Let's try the 357. All right, 357 mag. Way more shootable to me than the than the rest of them. So I don't know scientifically what that is because even though this has more foot pounds energy than that 44 mag. There's less felt recoil. And I don't think the two ounces difference in weight that this has over that is making that difference. I think it's just, it's loaded with a different powder is what I'm thinking, what, what's going on than the um, 44 mag. So there's a lot of things that go into felt recoil that, that are you know not really easy to figure out. So overall, we're seeing a different difference here. You know, you can't just take bullet weight and say, this is the bullet weight you should use for this reason or for that reason. When we're talking 10 millimeter, 40, um, you know, hot 40 or 44 mag or something of that nature, 180 grain is fine. But when you put 180 grain in a powerful, smaller diameter, like we saw with the 357 mag, it's going to over penetrate. And this is the type of load you'd want for hunting a deer or something. Well, you're not necessarily wanting to dump the energy because you know you're not trying to stop it the way you would try to stop an attack or what you're trying to do is punch holes through both sides so that you got two bleeding holes you know to, to kill it essentially you know when you're hunting you're you're killing when you're defending yourself you're not trying to kill you're just trying to stop so definitely a big difference here overall so are they comparable? No, not at all. Our energies are comparable, but what we have in the end result is not at all. And tactically, even if this were the same, this is the most powerful by energy numbers, but even if it were the same energy numbers or even a little bit lower than those other two, we would still actually be more powerful because we're putting more power on a smaller diameter. And that's basically how sectional density is very very interesting how it works so that's what you get today so as always comment share and like and thanks for watching